What if I told you that there is a way to build a solid investment portfolio by only investing in two assets? That portfolio exists and it's called the two fund portfolio. So in this video, I'll teach you the different versions of this portfolio created by some of the best investors and money managers in history like Warren Buffett and Jack Bogle. And I'm also going to show their respective performance over time versus other popular portfolios like the three fund portfolio. Okay, so before we get into this, I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. You need to do your own due diligence but I want to give you an idea of how to construct this two fund portfolio using existing asset classes such as mutual funds or ETFs. So what is a two fund portfolio in general? So a two fund portfolio is basically a portfolio that contains two funds, uh, some sort of a total stock market index fund and some sort of government bonds or treasury bills. So I'm going to give you three examples and that's why I have three different um, basically numbers right here. These are just going to represent 90% and 10% of this pie. Obviously, this will change based on your age. If you're 25 years old versus 75 years old, you may want to adjust some of these accordingly. And just a quick reminder that I'm not and NerdWallet Inc. aren't financial advisors. This is educational content provided by NerdWallet and we aren't providing investment advice. So the first one I'm going to show you is Warren Buffett. So Warren Buffett firmly believes that you should put 90% of your pie into some sort of S&P 500 fund. This could be SPY or VO. Oh, here is a direct quote from his 2013 newsletter to all Berkshire Hathaway investors. And I quote, my advice to the trustee could not be more simple. Put 10% of the cash in short-term government bonds and 90% in a very low cost S&P 500 index fund. I suggest vanguards. I believe the trust's long-term results from this policy will be superior to those attained by most investors, whether pension funds, institutions, or individuals who employ high fee managers. So you heard that straight from the horse's mouth, straight from the Oracle of Omaha. So what he wants you to do is put 90% of this portfolio into some sort of equivalent of the S&P 500. Again, this could be ticker symbol SPY or ticker symbol VOO. That is Vanguard's according to his direct quote. And then the other one is going to be something similar to a 10% allocation to a VSBXS, for example. Uh, this is going to be short-term treasuries. Now, if we look at Jack Bogle, who's actually the founder of Vanguard, he believes you should do this. He believes in the 90% total U.S. stock market fund. In this case, that would be a VTI. And then also 10% of total U.S. bond index funds. And the Vanguard equivalent to that would be BND. So for the last one, this is actually a gentleman called Rick Ferry. Uh, he's a registered investment advisor. He's an author. He's a financial advisor. Uh, he's a big Boglehead. And he just switches up Jack Bogles a little bit. So instead of total U.S. stock market with VTI, what he wants you to do is go 90% global stock market, which in this case would be VT, and then 10% U.S. intermediate term bonds, not just a 10% total U.S. bond or a 10% short-term treasury uh, like Jack Bogle or Warren Buffett. You would get exposure to that in VBILX. Uh, and if you're looking for like ETF equivalents, uh, VSBXS, excuse me, VSBSX, that's hard to say, uh, has VGSH. Uh, and then also you have uh, BIV for VBILX. So those are your two options if you're looking for an ETF equivalent. Remember, these are just examples and that Vanguard is a monetizing partner with us here at NerdWallet. However, they did not have any input or review of this video. Mention of Vanguard is strictly for educational purposes. Full disclosure, I personally own shares of VTI, which is an ETF provided by Vanguard. Okay, so now that you understand what's actually going into this two fund portfolio based on this 90-10 allocation, and again, you can change those weightings depending on your age or your risk tolerance. Uh, who is this portfolio even for? How do you know if you're even interested in investing in something like this? So one is that this is for people who can't or don't want to pick individual stocks, which is, in my opinion, most people. Um, a lot of us have daily lives outside of just building portfolios and analyzing stocks and doing security analysis. Uh, so if you're someone who wants to set it and forget it, which is the next point, this is definitely for you. So setting it and forgetting it comes through dollar cost averaging with a long-term outlook. Uh, say, for example, you know you take home $1,000 a week or $1,000 every pay period. You can then uh, figure out what your budget is and allocate a certain percentage to this portfolio because this is a long-term outlook portfolio. And then finally, point number three, this is for people who are looking for lower fees. So a typical uh, financial advisor, you're probably going to be somewhere around 1% uh, in fees on total assets managed. But if you go with like a VOO, for example, this is going to be 0.03%. So this is 97 basis points less than 1% with a typical financial advisor. Uh, if you're looking at a VT, for example, that's 0.07%. Uh, so just to give, the, give you some context, on a $100,000 portfolio, 1% 
percent in fees would be a thousand dollars per year with this it's only going to be 30 if you're looking at like a voo for example where the expense ratio is only 0.03 percent so how does this portfolio compare to something more popular like a three fund portfolio or other portfolios out there uh, what i want to do is i want to take you to my laptop share my screen and then we'll take a look at how this fares over time okay so now we're in the back testing portion of this video and before i show you this scenario of past performance this is strictly a hypothetical based on portfolio visualizers own numbers and back testing this is not an indicator of future performance uh, what i want to do is i want to actually see these three different philosophies between warren buffett Jack Bogle and Rick Ferry, and I'll show you real quick. I'm gonna zoom in and show you exactly what we're comparing. All of these are 90% equities, 10% of the second thing, whether that's bonds or treasuries or whatever those uh, asset classes are, uh, just know that they are all 90-10. So for the first one, I used Vanguard's 500 Index Investor. This is VFINX. I know I mentioned to use the S&P 500, uh, SPY or VOO. This allows me to back test just a little bit further. So that's the Warren Buffett one. The second one is the Jack Bogle one where I'm using VTI and BND. The third one is going to be VT and VBILX. Again, this is Rick Ferry's. This is the total world stock ETF. And then the second one is the intermediate term bond index fund. So uh, what we did here is this testing starts back in December 31st, 2009. Um, so you can see that these results are for the past 14 years or so. So when we, when we zoom in here, you can see the performance summary. It's actually pretty staggering. So you have the Warren Buffett one actually ends up at $52,440. Jack Bogle ends up at $52,178. And Rick Ferries is actually underperforming pretty significantly at $32,823. This is if you invested $10,000 back in December 31st, 2009. You can see the compound annual growth rate is significantly higher for the first two. And you can see that the... Uh, Warren Buffett's actually has almost the best year. That's actually Jack Bogle's has the best year at 29.9%, but he also has the worst year at negative 18.8%. So uh, this one actually, the Warren Buffett one actually ends up being the most um, successful and relatively least volatile when you look at the sharp ratio. So now that we know that the Warren Buffett one outperforms everything, I wanted to go into uh, the second part of this demo is actually backtesting against the three fund portfolio. So what I used for this was the total US stock market at 70% of the portfolio, uh, global stock market outside excluding the US at 20%, and total US bond market at 10%. That's a, that adds up to be 100%. For the second portfolio, I just used US large cap, uh, aka S&P 500 or similar, and then also 10% short-term treasuries, and we can see the two results here. So again, the first one is the three fund portfolio. The second one is Warren Buffett's. So let's take a look at the numbers. So if I zoom in, you can see portfolio one, and let me actually show you where this starts uh, very quickly. So these start December 31st, 1986. So if you were to put in $10,000 into these two portfolios and not touch anything and not reinvest anything um, after the, this number of years since 1986, with 10 grand, you would end up with $278,497 uh, for the first portfolio. That's the three fund. And then the second one is the Warren Buffett portfolio, the two fund portfolio that we're talking about in this video. It's over $100,000 more at $386,108. Uh, it has a higher compound annual growth rate, and it also has a better best year and a better worst year, if that makes sense. Uh, you can see the max drawdowns over here as well. So at the end of this, you can see these numbers. It significantly outperforms. So to me, this says Warren Buffett is onto something, right? The one caveat I do want to say, though, is that say you were 20, 20 years old and you, uh, in 1986 and you have $10,000 to put into both these portfolios, right? Um, you have to realize that your portfolio allocation is probably going to change over time. So yes, this is showing you the results that would be if you were to stay in this fund for roughly 40 years or so. But your, your allocation is going to change over time, which is obviously going to change these results. This is assuming that you put in this 10 grand 40 years ago or so and didn't touch it the entire time. These are the numbers you're going to end up with. So I think this is a pretty compelling reason to actually take a harder look at the two fund portfolio if you haven't already. Uh, but again, as you get older, your risk tolerance is going to go down and you may change your allocation. But these numbers don't lie and it's pretty compelling. So if you got value out of this video, uh, take a look at our other videos. Um, I'm making more videos for NerdWallet. It's a pleasure to do so. If you like my style, uh, click on the link down below to subscribe, hit the bell notification and like the video, and also leave a comment. What are your thoughts about the two fund portfolio in general? 